I don't even know if I was 10 steps away from her and I clearly heard God say, Sometimes life's biggest storms give you the most beautiful rainbows. We are chasing rainbows. Rainbows are a sign of God's promises and that is how this channel got its name. I have walked through three miscarriages. I have one living child here with me, Jayla. She is going to be 16 in March. I can't even believe it. And we have three babies that we've lost. Uh, Samuel John, or Sammy, Jackson Alexander, and Peasley Grace. I've got her little elephant here. This room that I'm sitting in was supposed to be Paisley Grace's room. When I found out we were pregnant with, with her, um, we were living in a two bedroom apartment and the further my pregnancy progressed, we knew we needed to find three bedrooms. So we went looking and we found this house and we moved in. And I don't remember how long it was after we moved in, but we ended up losing Paisley Grace. And it was devastating because then we had this room that was meant to be hers and uh, yeah, it was just gut-wrenching. It, it was the biggest, most empty reminder of loss I've ever felt. We had this door closed and just empty after it happened. I couldn't even come in here. And it was like that for a long time. And then when I got closer to her due date, I was inspired to not only open the door, um, but almost plan and make a space for a future baby. Having that, that hope and that faith that God would give us another child, whether it was a miraculous fourth pregnancy or fifth, fifth pregnancy, I guess. I guess I had four. Um, but another one that actually made it here that we would get to bring home or fostering or adopting something. I wanted, I didn't want this room to be turned into an office. I didn't want it to become a storage area. I didn't want it to just, I don't know, be some, a guest room when it was never meant for that. And I was just clinging on to God's promise that we would have another child. We decided that this was going to be called the baby's room. That's what it was going to be. Even Jayla knew that. It was the baby's room. Like, it was her spot. I just couldn't, I couldn't turn it into anything else. I just felt like we would be giving up if it did. And I didn't want to do that. Um, and if you've watched off of my videos, you know I ended up like getting a little baby bassinet and I keep all their little their little animals in there and I also got a reborn doll because I struggled with empty arm syndrome just needing to feel that weight of something in my arms and so I got a weighted doll to hold in moments when I just sometimes you just need to sit and cry and um yeah that really helped me get through grief and actually you'll notice that that's well, not even in here now like I took it out of the room and it's been out of the room for quite some time and I don't even remember why I moved the baby's bed out um I actually moved it into um our master bedroom and it's by my side of the bed and I think I, I couldn't I just couldn't sleep one night and I was just so upset and um I don't know if it was around Jackson's due date last year. I don't know. For some reason I was upset over Jackson specifically. I know I had dreams about him not long ago, but I don't remember when it moved, but I remember moving the bed there and taking his little animal out and sleeping with his animal. And for some reason, like it helped me sleep better than I have ever slept or so I just left it. And ever since then I've stopped coming in here and I kind of regret that in some ways because I have, I gotta take this thing off the, off the stand so you can see here. Hold on, if I can get it off, there we go. 
I have verses and just all over the walls, just promises, vision boards, and lots of the baby's things, Sammy's animal, Jackson's, just things that we've got for them over time. I've just kept in the room and I didn't want to take them out of here, like I said. So, hold on now, let me put you back. Anyways, I stopped coming in here and I stopped looking at those verses and I think I stopped, I, I feel like whether I was saying it out loud or not, I feel like I was almost giving up on, on those promises. I was giving up on the hope that this room was going to become anything more than just, I don't know, being an empty room of stuffed animals and baby stuff. And, um, anyways, my daughter Jayla approached me the other day and she was like, I don't know how you would feel about this, but would it be possible for me to switch switch rooms and take the baby's room and you can move all the other stuff into there? And it totally it caught me off guard. I wasn't upset by it or anything, but I just thought, you know, I need to think about that. I need to pray about that. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't want to just give a rash answer. And I started to walk away and I clearly heard God. I mean, I don't even know if I was 10 steps away from her and I clearly heard God say, give her both rooms. Trust me and give her both rooms. And I just thought, excuse me? <laughs> what does that mean? And I, I kind of thought of the story of Abraham, Sarah, and their son Isaac and how Abraham and Sarah went through infertility. They were in their old age and were promised this baby. And then they finally, like, Sarah laughs at, the, at God's promise, doesn't believe it's gonna happen. And then it finally does. But then God asks Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. The one he has promised him is going to give him this long, long line that he's of creating a whole nation through him. All these promises. And it doesn't make sense at the time. It, it, God doesn't explain anything more, but God was testing Abraham's, not just his faith, I believe. I think he was also wanting to see if his son had become an idol, if his son had higher importance and value than God in Abraham's life. I think it was a test of that, wanting to know where his heart actually lied. And I think this is that moment for me. God is wanting to know, are you putting this hope for the baby or having another child or growing your family above me? And if I'm being honest, at moments that has been true. There have been times where that is my sole focus, that is what I am wanting. And, and even at one point, I was gonna sign up for foster care classes whether God told me it was okay or not. And he made it clear it was not, and I was still trying to do it anyways. And that's when I actually ended up with my head injury, <laughs> was literally that week. I was gonna start foster care classes that weekend, and then I couldn't function. He literally stopped me in my tracks. And I am thankful he did, because I know that's not what we, we were supposed to do at that, that point in time anyways. And um, sorry, I'm kind of getting lost in my thoughts here again, but I know that this is a test of my faith, um, but also my heart. Um, God wanting to know if he's first, if he's first, and if I can really hold on to that faith by letting go of everything. Are you willing to let it go for me to actually give you what you want and then some? And until Abraham actually put Isaac on that altar and went to actually sacrifice Isaac, um, God stopped him and then provide, provided a lamb. And if you know the rest of the story, like this, I mean, really, the whole family line, Jesus was born from that line, which is just amazing. From an infertile couple 
became the savior of the world. I just, that's just mind blowing. So here I am at this crossroads <laughs> and he tells me that and I hear it and I called Jason into the room as soon as I heard it and I shut the door and I said, God told me we need to give her both rooms. And I'm like, and before you say anything, I am not giving up on the promises. I'm not giving up hope for having another child, even in my old age. I won't tell you how old I am, but we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> from the world's standard, I am old. But from God's standard, there is no such thing. Like there's no, age it's just a number and I really believe he can do anything and I think I need to take this step of faith and actually um give her this room and that's what I told Jason was like we need to give her this room no questions asked we just need to do what God is saying and trust that he's going to give us the rest and even if even if I were to get pregnant I thought about this if I were to get pregnant by some miracle, pregnancy lasts for 10 months. So 10 months and then the baby, let's be real, no one wants to get up in the middle of the night, walk down the hall and go to the room. The baby always ends up sleeping in your room for the, the first few months at least of life. Or at least that's how it's going to work for me because I don't want to walk down the hall. I just want to wake up and lean over and pull the baby out of the bassinet or the back and play, whatever. Anyways, so thinking of that, that thought in mind and goals that we are working on as a family, like we are renting this house and we don't want to stay renting forever. We don't want to stay here forever. Oh, I don't know. We may stay here for a year or two more, but I hope to be out of here by then. So then I was thinking that if I'm really forward focused and I'm really thinking that we're going to do that. I would not be bringing a baby to this home and making a baby's room here. It just wouldn't be a thing because we would be focused on the next place that we're going to go. And if I'm so, if I plant my feet so firmly in this place, then God's not going to give us the other desires of our heart. I think when we keep our hands full of stuff and we hold on to it, hold on to these things that are just things for dear life. If we aren't careful, they become idols. And I don't want that in my life. I want God to know that he's first in my life and that yes, I'm still hoping for another child in one shape. In, in one way or another, it just feels so weird to go, okay, you promised us all these things, but now we're just going to let go of all of them. So if you are brave enough to say this with me to God, like God, just here I am with empty hands. Take everything. I'm laying it all at your feet. Fill my hands with whatever you would have for me, Lord. That is my prayer of this year. And if you're brave enough to pray that with me, put it down in the comments too. Like, come with empty hands, Lord, fill me. Um, hit the thumbs up button too. If you are like, have experienced anything like this and can relate to this anyway, like, I feel like there's a lot of people out here where we just clean on to things. There's just things that we hold on to that we can't let go of. I told my husband, like, if he wasn't with me, and I didn't have him and I didn't have Jayla. <laughs> I had things like this happen. I think I would probably be a hoarder. I don't think I would. I I like hold on to things for dear life because I have experienced so much loss in my life outside of even just um, losing our babies. Um, I've experienced losing things like possessions and just having to be uprooted and moved and like you know what that feels like and it's not a good feeling and so then I I know I have that personality type that I just cling on too tightly to things that if I were left to my own devices it would be a very scary place mm -hmm. oh, I don't even want to imagine it but yeah that's where I'm at so this officially is the last video where you will see me sitting down in this room 
with it being the baby's room, Paisley Grace's room. It wasn't even really Paisley Grace's room. It was her supposed to be room, but I think that I had more of this is a future child's room. And it felt very hard, still feels hard, to think of giving that up. But sometimes the things that we let go of are the very things God wants to give us in return. He just wants to see if we're willing. So this is me saying that I am willing and I'm going to actually film us cleaning out this room, packing it all up, and it'll be hard, but I also know it is actually moving towards the very thing I want. I, I know the sooner that we get this room cleaned out and we start transforming this into Jayla's bedroom and then her other room and into her hangout space or office, I don't know what it'll be, but I know that we're going to be moving exactly in the right direction. <laughs> Even if it feels like we're moving backwards or totally giving up. Why does like God do this, man? This It's so hard, right? It's so hard to walk through these tests of our faith. But when we do, man, so many good things happen. Actually, hold that thought. I was thinking... I wrote this down and I didn't even think about plan of mentioning it for this video, but I wrote down a quote that my pastor said from uh, a sermon on December 3rd of 23. Um, he said, there is blessing in obedience and breakthrough follows follow through. And that is what I'm hoping for. I am hoping for breakthrough because we have been just stuck in the same place. And I'm ready to move out of this wilderness. <laughs> if you watched the last video, then you know what I'm talking about. I feel like the Israelites just wandering in the wilderness before the promised land. <sighs> I'm ready to move forward. Another, another verse that came to my mind um, that I had read that morning, the morning that Jayla had asked me about switching rooms. It says, uh, it, it's Matthew 6, 34. This is the message version. It says, give your attention to what God, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Let me start over. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. I really needed that. I think I'm so focused sometimes on future that I forget about the right now and I'm missing things right now. And my daughter is about to turn 16 years old. And that means I only have a few years left with her in this house before she takes off on me, goes to college and starts doing her own thing. And I just thought, I just really want to bless her and in ways, um, that I'm able to right now. I may not have a ton of money or a ton of resources, but I can take what I have and use what I have to be a blessing to those around me in the here and now and not just hold on to things and wait for what's next. Because if I do that, if we choose to always wait for what's next, we're going to miss out on what's here right now. And I know I'm going to regret it. I'm going to look back and I'm going to have regrets on, on just sitting and waiting. That's not what God wants us to do. When he makes a promise to us, he doesn't want us to just sit on, sit and wait and do nothing. He wants us to still hold that promise in our heart, trust him that it's going to happen, but move forward and be present in life right now. So, hopefully... <laughs> this helps you in some way. This is going to be hard for me to do, but it's going to be good. And I'm going to bring you along for packing this room up. And I think I'm probably going to need help. I thought I was going to do it on my own, but I think I need Jason here, maybe even Jayla to do it with me. Um, 
to take things down off the wall and um, pack up all the stuff in this dresser because, yeah, there's lots of things that I've left clothed in these, in these drawers, like kid books and baby things and baby clothes and things that we had bought for all the babies. Um, yeah, so I don't know where any of it's going to go. I don't know where it's going to live. I don't know. I don't know where or how things are going to end up looking or changing, but I'm excited for new. I am excited for change and just living in the present. Um, keeping, keeping what I said from the last video, simplifying, focusing, and finishing. I'm, I'm ready to cut out the excess and stop holding on so tightly to things and hold on to God and just go where he takes me. So I'm going to stop rambling. Hopefully this video wasn't too long and that you stuck with me to the end. If you have, thank you so much for doing that. And also if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that way you know when a new video is coming out. Like I said in the last video, I am trying to focus on bringing you more balanced content. So miscarriage, infertility, but life beyond those things. I want to share my life with you and do life with you. So thank you again for being here all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. I love you guys so much. And I'm going to say goodbye for now. And I look forward to chasing rainbows with you next time. Bye-bye.